How you doing guys? Richard here from Yes I Can Handyman. Um, this is hopefully going to be a first of many videos uh, in the how-to series. Um, today we're tackling a major topic uh, which is a leaking shower. Um, a lot of people don't know they have a leaking shower until the problem has got um, pretty large. Uh, now if you have a, a brick veneer house and if your walls are wood and if your floors wood, Leaving a leaking shower for an extended period of time can cause um, major damage, which could be quite costly. So today, not only I'm going to show you how to detect um, leaking showers, but also how to repair them. So the first thing is, we've taken out the shower screen here because we're going to be replacing it. Um, normally it's a very enclosed area, um, so it is a bit of a tight fit, but there's nothing that you can't do. You'll save yourself quite a bit of money, and for about $100 or so in material, and about 3 or 4 hours in time, um, we'll have a repaired shower. Now the things you want to look for um, for a leaking shower is gaps in the grout. Okay, like this. This is what the shower screen was. It had no silicon, so the water was actually going through here, causing damage to the wall behind. You have cracking. These are the major um, points of failure, which is your corners uh, between the walls and the, between the walls and the floors. They are your major failure points. Um, that's where a lot of the water would leak from. Um, also on this side here, you can see that there's major cracking up here. Okay, all the way down to the floor. And there's also, if you look at the grout at the bottom, you can see how the water's eaten it away. So just here. So the grout's pretty much gone, water gets in there, and it starts deteriorating everything underneath. So it's very important that you detect them. Other signs of um, water damage is the wall directly behind this um, was starting to, it had a lot of moisture in it, and it was starting to crack, chip, and it looked like it was wet. Um, other signs is if you go under the house, um, you'll find water, smells of mold, smell of just dampness is generally um, how you detect a, a leaking shower. Um, also, you really want to check, um, if you're not sure, you may have uh, a leaking plumbing, which is behind the wall. We've had ours checked by a plumber, um, and they've um, classified it as leak proof, so we know that it's from the grout. So if you're unsure, have your um, plumber come out and make sure that your um, piping behind the wall is not leaking. Now, to remove the grout, uh, we use a multi-tool, okay, with a diamond blade grout removal bit, okay, these are not cheap, but it's, it's, it's a good idea to have a good quality one, because these wear out quite a bit. Now when you're taking out the grout, okay, you, you want to have both hands for support, because it's very easy for this to slip and it will scratch the tile, so it's, got a, it's a very slow, steady process. Okay, so you run the machine and you run it down the grout line. Now ideally, you want to remove as much of this grout as possible, going in, the, going about two to three cent, uh, millimeters deep. I generally go to the bottom of the tile and that'll give enough grout for the new grout to go on. Um, the more you take out, the better, but it also, it takes time. Now when you're doing a job like this, it's very important because you're going to be in such a tight space. You've got eye, ear and dust protection um, and just take your time. I'm going to remove the grout now, I'll be back straight after that.
back again. There's also a couple of things that I forgot to mention. Um, if you don't have a multi-tool like this, then you can you can use hand tools. Now also, when you buy the diamond bit, if, if you're going to use a multi-tool, make sure there's, I think, two or three different sizes. Make sure your size of the blade that you choose correlates to the thickness or the width of the grout in your tiles. So generally, larger tiles have larger grout lines. If you have a mosaic tile, it's usually a thinner grout line. So you have to buy this um, accordingly. Because if you use a, a, a thicker one than the grout, you'll damage your tile. And if you use a thinner one than the grout, then it takes too long to take it out. Now, if you're not going to use one of these, you can get these hand ones, okay, which are available at your local Bunnings. Um, they come with a, a diamond blade, similar, but this is hand. So I generally go back over for my job. Um, just to clean up any rough edges, it gives me a bit of manual labor and it allows me to finesse it a bit more. And especially in corners where the machine can't go into, okay, it just allows me to clean up that corner a little bit more. Now, there's one more thing that, um, that I, I want to mention. Down this crack line here, it's just too difficult to take out the grout, okay? Technically, there shouldn't be any grout in there because the grout in here will definitely crack. So, what we do is we give it a, just a quick clean up while we're doing this. Um, try not to damage any of the tiles and we run a bead of silicon, a heavy duty uh, bathroom shower silicon um, all the way around. Now the silicon will, um, will flex so it doesn't crack. Um, I, I will run um, some grout just over it for aesthetics reasons and then after that we'll run the, um, the silicon which will make it watertight. Alright, back to work. Richard here again from this I Can Handyman. So we've taken all the grout out, all the old grout. Um, we did find some really, really soft spots. Um, also we found that um, however tile this has left the spaces in there and it's pretty close to the edge so we took as much of that as off as possible. Now you've got to be very careful when you run over this with the machine, it generally jumps out um, and it tries to scratch. Now I've, I've accidentally scratched a bit here, um, just a little bit. But that will be very, very, very... Um, all right, uh, very not noticeable once I finish the grouting process, so you won't really say that much, uh, which won't be too much of an issue. Now, what you're going to need for grouting um, is your grout. I like to use the Dunlop grout. Um, a lot of your pros prefer not to. Um, I buy this because it comes in a small packaging. It's from Bunnings. It's only about ten or eleven dollars each. It comes in a variety of colours and it's very easy to use. Um, so I use the you're going to need a grouting sponge, which you can get from Bunnings as well. Um, a grouting float. I use a, a scraper with a round head so it doesn't scratch the bucket. Um, and yeah, so when you're mixing the powder, I generally put the powder in first, so the grout. I make a little hole in the middle. I add water slowly, slowly, slowly. I mix it to a toothpaste consistently, consistency, so not too runny, not too thick, just enough to work with. Um, so yeah, um, it's very important that you get the right consistency because if it's too dry, it'll crack prematurely and if it's too wet, the same thing will happen. So it's very important that you follow the instructions on the box. So I'm going to mix some grout now uh, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back again. Now, the consistency that you want to make it is, so, toothpaste consistency. So it's relatively thick. Um, so. When you're mixing it, make sure you go all the way to the bottom, make sure there's no dry patches, dry areas, you get as much as you can off the walls. Um, you don't want anything that's dry to drop in later on. You can add a little bit of water now, but once you've mixed it, um, you can't, see this one's slightly dry, so I'll add a little bit more water to it. Okay. Once you've mixed it, um, I generally let that one rest for about a minute or two, just um, so it gets a... Um, um, and just all mixes through and any excess water um, evaporates. And then, um, yeah, we'll start the grouting process. But again, make sure this is a very, very important step that you mix it well. Uh, and then you mix it according to the instructions. So um, I'm going to finish mixing this, I'm going to let it rest, and then we're going to come back so we can uh, grab the wall. Okay, guys, so it's time now to, um, to grout. There's no real right or wrong way to do this, um, it's all about um, trial and error. This is the way I do it. Um, so, very, very, very important tip. Always do the walls before you do the floors. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> the first time I did it, I grouted the floors, then I grouted the walls, and because the floors are gonna be a black grout and the walls are gonna be a white grout, 
it sort of took forever to make sure it looked good. Um, so it was just a bit of a waste of time. So I always do the walls, finish the walls completely, then you can do the floors. And that way you're not um, stepping on fresh grout or whatever and you don't have to wait two days for everything to dry. So this is how I grout, okay? So I start generally um, down low, okay? And I work on an angle, so I, I squeeze them into the gaps and then I kind of like scrape it off again. Squeeze it into the gaps, scrape it off. Now when you scrape it off, you want to scrape it off at an angle. Okay, so you want to come down and up, so squeeze all the grout in there, and then take it all off again, but on an angle. Make sure it's on an angle, otherwise you will take out the grout that you just put into the, into the gaps between the tiles. Okay. Quick note guys, if you find that your grout is drying rapidly, or if you're a really hot day, um, because I had the heater on here, so I can dry out um, when I was wiping, well, cleaning it down before, so the tiles are actually sucking out um, the water out of the ground pretty quickly. So I use a damp sponge and just sponge it down. Just keep it a little bit damp. Um, that will help with your work time, okay? And just make it really a lot more easier to apply the grout, okay? Um, if you're in really, really hot conditions, um, as the drying time is happening, you want to moisten it. So you really want to moisten everything um, uh, after you put it on there. So very light misting. So it allows the proper times for it to dry and it doesn't crack. So it's very, very important, okay? So I'm gonna put the rest of the grout on and I'll come back for the next stage. Switch it back again from this okay, handyman. Alrighty, so um, I've just finished putting the grout on one of the walls. Again, working small sections at a time, um, uh, especially when you're first starting off, because it just makes life a lot easier. So I've just footage, um, push, it, just push it in, you know? As long, the whole point of this is just to push all that grout into the gaps. Now that you've waited 10 to 15 minutes, so it's firm to the touch, okay? We get ourselves a grouting sponge, okay? You wanna wring it out properly, make sure there's absolutely no excess water in this. So when I say properly, I mean properly, okay? Then what you wanna do is on an angle, you wanna wipe on an angle, okay? What this will do is, it'll even out your grout line, okay? And it'll also take all the, all the excess off, okay? You want it as much as you can, wherever possible, to go on an angle, um, and that will stop you from taking too much out of the tile. Okay, and once, every now and again, I turn it over, okay? So I go with, always have a clean edge to work with. So you want to go up and down, get into all those little gaps. Now, this is the first time, the second time I go over it, I do more of a, um, a finishing um, go over. So now, again, it's dirty in the water. You want to make sure you change this water out regularly. You don't use dirty water and make sure you rinse it out properly and squeeze out all that excess. Okay? So again? Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to finish doing this. Um, so the next step after this, so once you do that, I like to go through, I like putting my index finger on the sponge and I like to run really lightly down the grout line, a perpendicular to it, like parallel to it. And what that does is it gives you a nice finish to the grout line, okay? Once that's done, um, I'll be back. So uh, let me finish all this and I'll be right back to show you what to do next. Here again from this I can handyman. So we've regrouted the walls, we've also regrouted the floors. Now if you see how we've got a dark um, floor grout and a light wall grout, now it's inevitable you're going to get some black onto the white. So what you do is right after you clean everything up, you run your cloth with your finger at the tip of it like that and you run it down the white grout line and what that does is it pulls the white colour down okay like you can see there's a little bit over here I'll get the rest off because it's got a bit of water on it so you're going to have it damp okay wrap your finger around it and then just very lightly run your finger down and that will um Get rid of the black, or the majority of it anyway. Okay. So now the last step, the last stage of the process is to take a dry cloth. Don't step inside, be careful. So make sure no, you don't step on anything. You get a, a, a dry microfiber cloth, and you start with the one that you first um, grouted, which was that one. And then, come on this way, and then you go around, and you just polish it off. Okay, and what this is gonna do, it is going to take off any residue left by the grout on the tile, okay, and it's going to give you a nice shiny finish. 
So if we just continue to polish this for a second, and especially on the black, you can see it, it's all coming off. Make sure you don't step on the ground on the floor. Ideally, you could wait. You can wait for the following day and then do the floor. But um, anyway, we, I just did it all together. And you can see that the gloss finish now. So that's about it. Um, the next series will be about how to silicone. So this is it for the grouting series. If you guys have any questions um, or require, any, require us to do the job for you, um, it's yes, I can handyman 0420-818181. Um, alternatively, you can PM me or leave a comment um, and hopefully we'll um, answer that for you if you have any questions. And don't forget, if we can't do it, no one can. Yes, I can handyman. See you later. Thank you.